Captain Midnight. This video is brought to you by Curiosity Stream. A few months ago, Disney released the sequel to the undeniable classic Mary Poppins, and it was kinda whatever. But one part I did really enjoy was when the cast found themselves inside a porcelain bowl, which was animated in a classic Disney style. And it turns out that according to director Rob Marshall, those scenes alone actually added a year to the post-production process of the film because it was such a big undertaking. The fact is, Disney doesn't do a lot of animation like that anymore. Old pros had to be called out of retirement just so someone around would actually know what they were doing. That kind of lush, well-realized animation style that Disney once led the world in has kind of fallen by the wayside. Replaced by CG animation or by the more simple, fast, and cheap style found on TV. Now both these styles have created great stuff too, so I don't want to throw them under the bus. But for generations of people who grew up with the expressive beauty of old school animation, it's really easy to miss that style and those stories. Now, Disney doesn't seem to have much interest in reviving that style, but you better believe they're aware of how powerful the nostalgia is for these old properties. Cinderella, The Jungle Book, Beauty and the Beast, these are all films betting on that audiences want almost literally exactly what they've seen before, but with CG instead of hand animation. And look, this has been discussed before by great YouTubers like Lindsay Ellis, so I never really thought about making a video about it myself, but Wow, this Aladdin trailer was just my breaking point. I mean, just look at this. Like, really, really look at it. It's so self-evidently bad. Like, that creepy deepfake of Steve Buscemi on the body of Jennifer Lawrence looks better than this. And yet, we all know they're gonna keep making these. There's no end of this in sight. Capcom has brought a blockbuster movie to the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Disney's Aladdin. That's right. I get the seductive appeal of these movies. Who doesn't like Emma Watson, Will Smith, or Donald Glover? Stick them in a familiar story that we all know and love, and you have a pretty good recipe to make money. But with only the slight exception of Jungle Book, it's almost never been very interesting to actually watch. Sitting down to watch 2017's Beauty and the Beast is kind of like drinking a LaCroix. It reminds you of drinks you've had before, but it doesn't quite manage to really have a distinctive taste of its own. It's like drinking a reminder of, hey, remember actual juice or soda? Those are pretty good. These films take the painstaking work of some of the best animators ever and turns it into this. It has the songs you love, but they're not sung by incredible Broadway vocalists, but by likable actors who can kind of sing okay. I think there's a standard list of things people say to defend these movies. Like that they bring the story to a new generation. The problem with that is that the original movies, with all their artistry and skill, still exist. In fact, if anything, they're easier to access now than ever. But the other thing I've heard people say that really gets under my skin is the idea that the CG movies are more realistic and therefore are some kind of upgrade. That's an obvious indication that animation as a medium doesn't really get the respect it deserves. Aladdin is a story about a likable thief who meets a magic genie and falls in love with a princess. Nothing about that needs to be realistic. The fact that animation allows the story to feel like pure fantasy is one of the most appealing things about it. But even if it wasn't, this doesn't look any more realistic than this. It just looks way worse and a lot creepier. Direct from the streets of Agrabah, Aladdin, Abu, Jasmine, Jafar, the magic carpet, and of course, the big blue guy in the- But you might be asking, what about The Jungle Book? That movie was pretty good. And I would agree that it's easily the best of the bunch, but it still suffers from many of the same symptoms. It might be a fun novelty to watch Christopher Walken voice King Louie, but by the time he's kind of singing through a pretty half-assed version of I Wanna Be Like You, the limitations of that approach become really clear. Walken is great, but in terms of singing in a musical, he's just no Louis Prima. And the same definitely goes for actors like Bill Murray. So one of the most memorable parts of the original film, the music, has to be very downplayed. And also, The Jungle Book is just a much, much older film than Aladdin or Beauty and the Beast. Like, we're talking decades and decades of difference here. So I don't think there's any need to update Aladdin at all, because it still plays really well to a modern audience. 
where Jungle Book, being much older, does have a few more dated elements. In fact, if there's one thing in Aladdin that looks and feels really dated today, it's the god-awful CG animation found in a few scenes. But apparently, that's what they wanted to keep most. I don't hate CG animation or CG effects, both can be incredible. But I have to say, it's sad to see so many of the older traditions in filmmaking fade away just because doing it digitally has become quicker and easier. Compare the memorable effects of Tim Burton's older films like Beetlejuice to the completely sterile and lifeless versions of the Burton aesthetic found in something like Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. This is how I feel about animation as well. I really don't see the point in an uncanny valley-ish, near photorealistic version of The Lion King. Not when the original is still there and still so great. And I definitely don't get how anyone could prefer the semi-realistic, dull CG to the colors and vibrancy found here. Like, I know the Lion King remake will probably crack a billion dollars worldwide. I'm pretty comfortable making that prediction based on just how well Beauty and the Beast did. But I still can't really shake the feeling that I don't get who it's for. Who wants to see the exact same movie with an extra song or two that looks worse and whose biggest draw is that it has more currently relevant celebrities in it? Heart pounding levels of gameplay to master before you're through. After you've escaped your enemies in the marketplace. So yeah, that Aladdin trailer was just... ugh. I don't think Hollywood is out of ideas, which is something you hear people say a lot. I think there's plenty of stories out there to tell. But it's tough for those to break out when the biggest studio, who also seems kind of hellbent on owning as many other studios as they can, puts its time and effort into making things like this. Exercises in empty nostalgia that seem to make everyone involved a lot of money, but kind of end up being nothing more than a footnote in the legacy of the original classic. There's still enjoyable elements to all of these movies. And of course there are. They're based on some of the most enjoyable family films ever made. But I do think they almost always suck away all sense of wonder and awe. They're kind of every bit as watered down and bland as the originals were colorful and visionary. I mean really, the least they could do is try a little harder than whatever this is. I don't think the problem with these movies is they're not telling a totally new story. After all, most of the classic Disney films you know, the company who currently keeps fighting to keep stories out of the public domain, are actually based on stories from the public domain. There's nothing wrong with finding new spins on old material. But the single biggest problem with these remakes is that the whole point of them is not to put very much of a new spin on anything. Because all they have, other than worse looking visuals, is the promise of nostalgia. I don't know much of anything about the upcoming Little Mermaid remake, but I pretty much guarantee you that its soundtrack will feature an actor singing an almost identical version of Part of Your World. Anything else would risk what all of these movies are banking on. That if you repackage the exact same thing and don't do anything daring or new, nostalgia-hungry audiences will eat it up. And I kinda wish we'd stop proving them right. You know, instead of watching weird CG lions sing songs you've already heard in a few months, how about we all watch some real lions instead? Lions Rock The Return of the King was a very entertaining and actually pretty touching documentary about a family of lions returned to the wild after years in captivity. It's well shot, I learned a lot about lions, and on top of that I didn't even have to listen to Seth Rogen try to sing. And you can only watch it on Curiosity Stream. Founded by the same guy as the Discovery Channel, this is the streaming service to get if you love documentaries and learning. They have over 2,000 to choose from in everything from history to science, tech, and way more. Plus, Curiosity Stream is available worldwide and starts at $2.99 a month. Oh, and you can get 30 days on the service for free just by going to curiositystream.com slash Captain Midnight, which you'll find a link to in the description and pinned comment below. Here's a special tip for the fellas and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 Flight Patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once, because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started, because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes too.